everyone, welcome back to Mason Sports Insider. I am Tyler Byer. I'm sitting alongside my new co-host, who you all met last week, Dan Ward. Thank you, Tyler. We had yet another action-packed week of Mason Athletics, with many of the teams continuing their out-of-conference schedules. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. Just like last week, we will start off the show with the men's soccer team who took on Albany on Saturday in their lone match for the week. We will pick things up late into the first half as Matt Tucker sent a shot that ricocheted off the left post, being the closest that the Patriots would get in the opening half. This would be despite the Patriots controlling the pace in the opening 45 minutes, outshooting the Great Danes 5-3. In the second half, however, Albany would get the first tick on the scoreboard being sent into the box by Musa Kanat that found the head of Carlos Clark, getting past Stefan Kraus for the first score of the contest. Minutes later, an aggressive Kraus inside the box punished the team, leading to a penalty kick by Leo Meglar. That would give Albany the 2-0 win, putting the Patriots at 1-2 to start the season, the first time that the program has held a losing record since 2011. The team currently sits at 6th in the conference standings, as many fellow Atlantic 10 schools are struggling in out-of-conference play as well. Earlier in the week before the action, Stephen Durbin was named the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. This was from Durbin's strong play in the week before when Mason was competing in the Kuiken Strong DC College Cup. He tallied a goal and two assists as a freshman. So far this season, Durbin has only started one game, but he has made appearances in all three games for the Patriots. Yep, encouraging play from Stephen Durbin. He's really a player that I might expect to step into that missing role that Timmy Mulgrew has left for the Patriots, and clearly, he was the difference on the team. I mean, Mason's now 1-2 and two last season, very encouraging year for the Patriots, just missed the NCAA tournament. Steven Durbin, hopefully he can step it up for the team, because they really need him right now. I could definitely see him making an impact. He's trying to make an impact already as a freshman. Big shoes to fill in Mulgrew. Doesn't necessarily have to be as special as Mulgrew was, being one of the top players Mason has seen in a while, but definitely a lot of promise in this kid. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now we move on to the women's soccer team, as the team was hosting the Patriot Invitational here in Fairfax for the first home tournament since 2009. Participating in the tournament would be UMBC, UNC Wilmington, and Appalachian State. The Green and Gold would kick off the action on the weekend, opening the tournament against the Seahawks from UNC Wilmington. Much of the first half, the Patriots have an extremely tentative attack, with shots in the box being limited. In the 23rd minute, the opponents would strike first, with a goal from the team's top player, Christina Giu. Then, moving on to the 40th minute, Emily Littell would look for the equalizer off the corner kick from Kyla Williams, but would just fall inches off the mark. The team would go on to lose their former CAA opponents 1 to nothing. The team then had another game on Sunday in which they hosted the Appalachian State Mountaineers in the final game of the Patriot Invitational. It turned out to be a very close game with two high powered offenses going head to head. Despite this, it was the defense of both teams that stole the show. After previously allowing three goals on only ten shots in their first four games, goalkeeper Megan Robertson and the Mountaineers shut down the Patriots' goal scorers in the first half. The Patriots dominated the first half in terms of, first, or in terms of time of possession, but only registered four shots and never had a real opportunity to score. The game went into halftime with both teams scoreless. The Mountaineers changed things up in the second half, by substituting senior goalkeeper Megan Robertson for sophomore goalkeeper Sam Style. The gameplay of the second half was similar to that of the first half until the 80th minute when senior Emma Starr dribbled her way past the Mountaineers defenders and set up junior Sarah Hardison with a header at the far post. Hardison was able to get the ball past the opposing goalkeeper with the header, but the ball hit the crossbar and went high and wide over the net. Hardison and the Patriots couldn't believe it. But they weren't done just yet, because in the 83rd minute, they looked towards Hardison yet again. This time it was redshirt sophomore Nicolette Hurtigan who dribbled down the far side of the field before setting up Sarah Hardison with another header opportunity. Hardison skied over her defender and this time found the back of the net for her fifth goal of the season. The assist by Hurtigan was her first of the season and the Patriots would go on to beat the Appalachian State Mountaineers in the final game of the tournament by a score of one to nothing. Kirsten Glad picked up five saves in the shutout win as the Patriots improved to three and two on the season. Glad and her teammates Emma Starr and Sarah Hardison were selected to the all-tournament team for their play this past weekend. 
The Patriots will have a few days off before hosting Illinois State University this Friday, September 11th at 5 p.m. The team now stands at 3-2 in the Atlantic 10 Conference, tied for fifth in the standings as preseason favorites Dayton and LaSalle continue to struggle in out-of-conference play. Yep, encouraging for the women's soccer team. I mean, new head coach Todd Bramble, he's doing quite well for the team, 3-2. and two. Uh, Team hasn't looked this good in a while for women's soccer. Definitely surprising uh, this season so far with the two soccer teams. The men's soccer team struggling a little bit, still early. But it's nice to see the women's soccer team, as you mentioned, having not this type of success in a few years. It's very good to see. And you got to love the play of Sarah Hardison. Five goals in as many games this season. Only a junior, a lot of good things to come from her. Yeah, and I don't know if you all know, but Sarah Hardison, a defender on the Mason Ross, listed for defense, but clearly playing in the forward position in much games this season. Preceding these matches, Abby Downey was another Patriot receiving all commerce honors by being named the Atlantic 10 Player of the Week for Women's Soccer. This award came in part to Downey's extra time game winning goal over the UMB receivers, excuse me, the UMBC Retrievers the previous week. The women's volleyball team looked to continue their strong start to the season in the D.C. Classic this past weekend. They began the tournament on Saturday in an opening match against Western Carolina University. The first set had 17 ties and 11 lead changes and took extra points to decide a winner. The Western Carolina Catamounts were able to find the edge late as they won the first set 28-26. Mason came back strong in the second set, however, with the defense coming up big as they registered four of their seven blocks in that set. The Patriots would tie the match up at one set apiece with a 25-20 second set win. Things were looking good for the Patriots, but the long and draining first two sets seemed to catch up to them in the third and fourth sets. They struggled to find their rhythm again in those sets and would drop both of them and fall to the Catamounts three sets to one. Senior Morgan Martin led the team with 11 kills, while freshman Maddie French recorded a career-high 10 kills in the loss. The Patriots were not done, however, on that Saturday, as they played a second match later in the day against the University of Penn Quakers. After trailing Penn early in the first set, the Patriots regrouped and battled back to win the first set 25-17. This would set the tone for the rest of the match that had 13 ties and 7 lead changes. The Patriots would drop the second set, win the third, and then drop the fourth to set up a deciding fifth set. The Quakers had a lead in the fifth set, but the Patriots continued to show their ability to battle back and never give up as they came from behind and would eventually win that fifth set 15-13 and take the match three sets to two. Morgan Martin again led the team, this time with 17 kills, and junior Caitlin Hipsher led the team with 42 assists. Sophomore Sidney Finoga had a great all-around game, picking up nine kills, four assists, and five block assists. Junior Tiffany Clark and freshman Maddie French also had solid games, picking up 10 kills and 8 kills, respectively. Moving on to the Sunday, the team would play the Howard Bison, the host of the DC Classic, as well as a team that they had already recorded a victory against last weekend. This match would finish with the same result as that game, with the Patriots victorious 3-1. Once again, senior Morgan Martin would hit for a season-high 64% in the game, with 17 total kills and only one attacking error. Mason would outblock Howard 9-6, and with the game-controlling victory, it gave time for head coach Jackie Simpson to work freshmen into the lineup. The encouraging play of Erica Partridge, Maddie French, and Katie Espinoza will continue to give them time in the Patriots lineup. Hours later, the team would then take on the Maryland Terrapins for the final match of the tournament. Mason would struggle, however, from the get-go against the Terps, trailing early in every set and being outgunned in basically all positions. The team once again will be led by Martin, who had nine kills en route to being named to the DC Classic All-Tournament team, but the end result would have the Patriots losing 3-0. The team leaves the weekend with an overall 4-3 record, tied with the George Washington Colonials for the top spot in the Atlantic 10 Conference as out-of-conference play will continue. Great job by this women's volleyball team so mm -hmm. far. Um, after a season last year that wasn't the best for them to come out and win four of their first seven games, a lot of good things coming out. Morgan Martin continuing to be their lead attacker, and all these freshmen and sophomores stepping up big. Maddie French, Erica Partridge, just to name a couple. A lot of good things going on for this women's volleyball team early in the season. Yeah, very good to see. Normally when you have coaching changes, you expect there to be like a one or two down years. You don't see the turnaround right as quickly as you would do. I mean, we're expecting that with the men's basketball team, and we're 
see how things go with the women's soccer team, but I mean, definitely with the women's volleyball team, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the Atlantic 10 when conference play comes around. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Now let's move on to the men's cross country team who opened up their season this weekend at the Spider Alumni Open in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Looking to shake off some of the rust, head coach Andrew Gerard sent out all of his redshirt players for this race. Redshirt freshman David Strickland and David Jutris recorded top 10 individual finishes in their first races with the team. Strickland completed his race in 15 minutes and 56 seconds, which was the sixth fastest at this event and Jutras finished the race in 16 minutes and 5 seconds for the ninth fastest time. Also competing for the Patriots were redshirt freshman Grayson Morgan, Paul Adam, Jonathan Schloth, and redshirt sophomore Marcus Hatchett. The Patriots would finish third in the team standings behind hosts Richmond and the winners Davidson. Andrew Gerard said after the race that overall it was a good start for the team, but there's still a lot of work to be done in the next eight weeks. They'll have a week of training before heading down to New Market, Virginia this Saturday for the James Madison Invitational. The, key, the team kicked off the season being ranked 14th in Southeast Region by the USTFCCCA. This comes after the team finished the 2014 season ranked 13th among the same schools. Last year, the top four schools of the region went on to compete in the NCAA National Championship with Virginia winning the Southeast Region. In the same competition, the women's cross country team came in fourth out of the four schools competing. Leading the Patriots was senior Victoria Doss, who placed 36 overall out of the 60 runners. Following her were freshman Carolyn Connie, Hunter Samuelson, and Caitlin Kelly, who finished 39th, 40th, and 41st, respectfully. In this race, head coach made it a point to start four of the freshmen to give them experience before the regular season picks up. This result should not be a concern for Mason Nation because Mason's two top runners, Kalanich and Nakumera, did not participate in the Spider Invitation. Earlier this week, Mason Athletics announced the addition of Sarana Hyatt to the coaching staff of the track and field team. The Sacred Heart alum will join the staff and work primarily with the team's sprinters, jumpers, and hurdlers. Hyatt joins the Patriot family with experience from assisting LaSalle and Columbia for the past four years. She'll be hoping to continue to build the track and field program that has won four A-10 titles over the past two years. Also in other Madison Athletic news, Sue Collins, the Senior Associate Athletic Director and Senior Women's Associate, has announced her retirement. Collins has worked with the Green and Gold for an outstanding 34 years. Under her guidance, the department has earned a Diversity and Athletics Award and formed six new sports at the school, five women's and one men's. This includes the women's soccer team that would go on to win Mason's first national championship in 1985. Collins would officially retire from her position on October 1st. Very sad to see Sue Collins go. I met her once in my time here at Mason, but she will surely be missed from the family. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Mason Sports Insider. Here's a look at this week's upcoming schedule. Yep, it's going to be a very interesting week. I mean, I'm sure... All of Mason fans remember the huge match against Virginia last year for the men's soccer team. This year, however, it will be in Charlottesville, so things are sure going to be very interesting. The defending national champions, the Virginia Cavaliers. Yes, the men's soccer team certainly has their work cut out for them on Tuesday, and they'll do be doing that before hosting the Capital Cup, which starts this Friday, where they'll take on Farley Dickinson and Hofstra over the weekend. Yeah, those games will be broadcast on Mason Cable Network, so make sure that you stay. If you can't make it out, you can watch it here on campus. The women's volleyball team, as you can see, they also participate in the Jack Kaiser Volleyball Classic, hosted by St. John's in New York, where they will play St. John's San Francisco, not normally an opponent that the Patriots will play against, Central Connecticut and Cornell. And then the women's soccer team will play Friday against Illinois State at 4.30, and then continue their successful season so far on Sunday where they'll take on Wake Forest. Yep, and then also the men's and women's cross country team once again will both participate in the same tournament. This time, however, it will be at James Madison for the James Madison Invitational. Well, that will do it for this edition of Mason Sports Insider. We hope you had fun here inside the studio. It's been a good time. We're getting used to it. We're getting back into the swing of things. If you want to follow us on Twitter and you like what you hear, you can follow me at the Tyler Byram, and you can also follow Dan at Dman Ward. Until next time, I am Tyler Byram alongside Dan Ward, and we'll see you guys next time.